Praise the Lord and good morning to everyone. I am so delighted this morning that God has allowed us to be able to connect once more on another presentation of Rays of Hope. I am so excited about what God is doing in these last and evil days. Though the times are challenging and there are many voices being heard throughout the world today, but there is one voice in the universe that I know that always provides hope. That is the voice of God. And those that are echoing or repeating or preaching or proclaiming what God has said in his word. His word still provides hope, regardless of the challenging of the times. We can always look forward to rays of hope emanating from the God of hope. And he's a God that is always there when we need him never late in any situation or circumstances. So I am delighted on this morning to bring to you another presentation of Rays of Hope. And I am excited about what God is doing uh, in the body of Christ, universal. And this morning, I am so delighted that you have joined me once again, just want you to, to continue to pray for rays of hope. And uh, although the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Region 2, shares in this presentation, but I want you to be mindful that the Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy in Liberia, West Africa, is also sponsoring, along with Region 2 of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you to pray for uh, the Christian Academy there in Liberia, West Africa. And they need our support, and I'm appealing to you that you would be uh, a support and help support the school there in Liberia, West Africa. And you can give a gift uh, toward the school uh, on a continuum basis or one-time basis, but they need our help. And you can... Uh, support by uh, using uh, the cash app, uh, if you would, uh, Robert L. Sanders Sr. dollar sign cash app. And uh, God will bless you, and I know he'll do it. So keep that in mind, if you would, in the name of Jesus the Christ of the Lord, as we continue to bring to you rays of hope. Now, let us go before God in prayer this morning that God will continue to lead and guide and direct us that we will become the sons and daughters that he has chosen us to be. And whatever God starts, he completes. The word of God said, he who begun a good work in you he shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That's why I am expecting one day to look upon the face of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he gives me hope. As the word of God states in Psalms 119, verse 114, Verse 114, it says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope 
in thy word. Did you hear that? Psalms 119 verse 114 says, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. We can put our trust, our confidence, and certainly our hope in the word of God. That's why I enjoy bringing to you on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. Rays of Hope. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, Father God, I am so grateful this morning that you have allowed me, along with your sons and daughters, to join together once again on another presentation of Rays of Hope. Father God, we know that you are a God of hope. Despite, Lord God, things that are going on in our world that cause discouragement, despondency in the hearts of so many, and some people feel hopeless. But Father God, we as your children are not hopeless. Our hope is in you, Lord God. Our hope is in your promises, your word, because your word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. And Father, I pray this morning that you would bless each and every one of your sons and daughters that have joined with me and bless every family that is represented this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, I ask that you would continue to remember Region 2 of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, remember the Christian Academy there in Liberia, West Africa. The Apostle Robert L. Sanders Senior Christian Academy. Bless, O oh God, as only you can. And we will praise you. We will glorify you. We will magnify you. Continue, Lord, to provide support for the Christian Academy. And, O oh God, that the students will grow in their knowledge, their understanding, and be prepared, O oh God, with the career that their lives will be enriched by your power, your word, and a good education. We thank you this morning, Lord God, for allowing us once again to meet on another presentation of Ray's of hope. Thank you, O oh God, for being our hope. In Jesus' name we pray and let the people of God say amen and amen. Once again, I just want to thank God for each and every one of you that have joined me this morning uh, in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. We want to continue our study uh, on the series of messages Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Fruit bearing is proof, it's evidence that you are living in Christ. Now, I have given you a few notes on the series of messages. And number one, just to check your notes, because we may complete this series this morning, I'm not sure. But if the Lord leads, we may complete it. Note number one that you should have. Uh, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Number one, fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit. That's proof, that's evidence that we're living in Christ. And that's love fruit of the Spirit. And that's Galatians uh, 5, 22 and 23. Note number two, 
fruit of righteousness, fruit of righteousness, which means that we are walking uprightly. And there's an uprightness in our lifestyle. And this is proof and evidence that we are living in Christ. Note number three, fruit of holiness. Fruit of holiness. And this has to do with separation to God. Separation to God. The fruit of holiness. This has separation to God. And that's in Romans 6, 20 to 23. Romans 6, 20 to 23. And uh, fruit, or note number four, fruit of our lips. This has to do with thanksgiving. Fruit of our lips. So he speaks of thanksgiving. Hebrews 13, 13 to 16 is what I want you to make a note of. And fruit number five, fruit number five, this is where we left off the last time we were together. Fruit number five, fruit in work. Fruit in work. And that has to do with our consistency doing the will of God daily. Fruit in our work. So fruit in work, with our consistency daily, that's Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 to verse number 14. Make a note of that. And so this morning, I want to add note number 6. Note number 6. Uh, under the umbrella of fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Fruit number six, fruit in, fruit of work, fruit of work, fruit of work. And that has to do with conversion and consecration. Are you with me? Fruit of work is number six which has to do with conversion and consecration. Conversion and consecration. Once we are converted, once we are saved, there should be a life of consecration. And then has to do with work. The things that God has called us to do uh, for him. Uh, when the Lord calls a... a, a child of God unto him, there is a work assignment. There are things to do. There are things that God has ordained for us to do. And so in that, we are to be fruit bearers, and being fruit bearers reflect that we are living in Christ. It's the proof. It's the evidence, because we bear fruit. We bear fruit of work, which speaks of our uh, conversion or salvation and consecration. That's important, fruit of work, conversion and consecration. And I want you to uh, be mindful of that. Now, I didn't read our foundational scripture, so turn there with me and we will read that before we get into uh, the passage of scriptures that supports each uh, point, if you will, or e each note that I give you. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, our foundational scripture 
it's in uh, verse 15 to verse number 20 of Matthew 7, it says, Be aware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruit ye shall know them. Every child of God, every woman of God, every man of God, every male and every female that are in God should be fruit bearers. Fruit bearers. And note number six that I've already given to you is the fruit of work. The fruit of work that has to do with our conversion and consecration. So it is important to uh, remember that, children of God. And I want you, if you would, to look with me in the book of Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, uh, verses 5 to 15. Romans chapter 1, verse, uh, I tell you what, let's look, start with verse number 8. Romans chapter 1, verse 8 to verse number 15. Let's go there together, if you would, talking about fruit bearing of work, fruit of work. That speaks of our conversion and consecration. Look what it says in Roman 1, beginning at verse number 8 to verse number 15. It says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayer. Paul speaking. Verse number 10 says, making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Verse 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. To the end ye may be established. Did you get that? Verse 12 says, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. The emphasis is here on verse 13. Look what it says. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oft time I purpose to come unto you, but was left hitherto, 
that I might have some fruit among you also. Did you see that? Even as among other Gentiles. In other words, what Paul was talking about to the Romans that he was called of God to be the apostle unto the Gentiles. And a part of his work, the fruit of his work, as a result of his conversion and consecration, he was called to exercise himself in ministry that is to produce fruit among believers. In other words, God was using Paul giftings and ability in the word of God to produce fruit among the Gentiles. In other words, what God does, he uses that which we have been equipped to do to serve the needs of others. So when we are serving the needs of others and being used of God to do so, what we are doing is bearing the fruit of work as a result of our conversion and consecration. Whatever we do, children of God, we are to do it as unto God. Whatever it is that he has assigned to your hands, that assigned to your life, we are fruit bearers and we must strive to bear fruit among the people in which God has placed us. Don't be static. Don't be fruitless. Be fruitful by bearing fruit. Let what God has given you to do speak for itself in fruit bearing. If you notice, Paul said his effort at striving to come to the Romans, there were times he was hindered. There was time he could not do as he so desired. But his heart was there. He wanted to deposit what God had given to him in the lives of others. A fruit bearer is a sharer a sharer of that which God has blessed them with. You are blessed, I am blessed, and whatever God has blessed us with, we are to share it as a result of our conversion and consecration unto God so that our lives will be fruitful. Our lives, if you would, will be able to add value to someone else's life, predicated upon what God has deposited in us and enable us to do, we become sharers of that which God has given to us, which causes us to be known as fruit bearers. And fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Paul, yes, he was not always saved. He persecuted the church initially. He locked folks up by following the way of God. But he did it in ignorance. But when he had his an encounter 
with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. The word of God tells us he was knocked off his horse to the ground. And Paul cried out, Who art thou, Lord? And the voice said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuteth. He said, Lord, what would you have me to do? He said, get up from there, go into Damascus, and someone will give you instruction. In other words, there was a man he was to meet that would give him further instruction from God. So you are familiar with that story, I'm quite sure. So when Paul was converted, experiencing conversion. Hands were laid on him. He was baptized in the name of Jesus the Christ, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what Paul did, by virtue of his conversion and his consecration of his life unto God, he became a fruit bearer. He was called to be an apostle unto the Gentiles. And he wanted to produce fruit. Are you a fruit bearer? It's a personal question. Are you a fruit bearer? And this is what the series of messages is all about. Fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. It's not enough for you to know that you have been converted and consecrated. Others should know it as well. Those that are in darkness, those that do not know the Lord, should be recipients of your sharing what God has given to you and entrusted in your hands as a believer, as one who have experienced conversion and living a consecrated life. Paul wanted his life to make a difference. One of the greatest thing as I believe that a believer can do in the life of someone else is to add value to that life by sharing what God has entrusted in their, your hands with others. Because when a person's life has been transformed by what you have shared with them that you receive from God, that person's life is no longer the same. And this is why Paul said, for example, here in Romans 1 and 13, he said, now I would not have you ignorant brethren. I want you to be aware. I want you to have a knowledge, brethren, that oft times, so many times, I purpose to come unto you, but was led hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. Paul wanted to be fruitful, not just in one area of the vineyard, but wherever the Spirit of the Lord direct him or gave him a desire to go. Children of God, for the rest of your life, in this dimension of life, I encourage you to be a fruit bearer. Share that which God has given to you. 
This is why Psalms 1 says, Ye shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth its fruit in its season, and his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. Bear fruit. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly does not bear the kind of fruit that pleases God. The ungodly are like the chaff that the wind drives away. But the child of God that has been converted, saved, delivered, and set free, living a consecrated, dedicated life, should be a fruit bearer and desiring to, to have a fruitful life by bearing fruit before the world. And this is one of the things that every believer should desire because you are a fruit bearer. It's proof, it's proof, it's evidence that you are living in Christ. And the world should know that you are living in Christ by being a fruit bearer. Amen. I thank God this morning that you were chosen, I am chosen, not to be fruitless, but to be fruitful. Jesus said, I come that they might have life and that more abundantly. So the Lord's will for you and will for me to be a fruit bearer. And we can do that. We can do that by embracing, note number six, fruit of work. Fruit of work. Carry out the work that the Lord has assigned to your hands and bring glory and honor to God and let your life be known as a fruit bearer. Somebody give God a shout of amen. Give him a thumbs up, a star up. Praise him. If you are receiving this this morning in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Now, note number seven, I want you to add this morning. Note number seven, I want you to include in your note taking under the umbrella, fruit bearing is proof and evidence that you are living in Christ. Note number seven, fruit of generosity, fruit of generosity, and that's in ministering, fruit of generosity. Make a note of that. Don't trust your memory. Write it down. Fruit of generosity. When a person is generous, It means that they are a giver. So fruit of generosity in ministering to others. Are you with me? The fruit of generosity ministering to others. It is important to be others-minded, not selfish, not self-centered and self-serving, but the fruit of generosity, ministering to others. When an opportunity presents itself to minister to others, 
take it. Take it and share generously what God has given to you. Because remember, God is a, a giver. In everything that we have, regardless of what it is, we received. We brought nothing into this world, and we shall carry nothing out. So what we have received from God, let us exercise and bear the fruit of generosity by ministering to others. This brings glory and honor to God and others are benefited by your generosity of being a recipient of the blessings and the graces of God. If you just reflect for a moment, everything that you have, everything that I have, we receive. And basically, we are not owners per se, we are stewards. A steward takes care of that which belongs to another. Are you listening? So Jesus has blessed you and I beyond measure. He has given us what we need to sustain our lives and to cause our lives to be fruitful and productive and successful. And what he wants us to do is to have an attitude of generosity. In other words, fruit of generosity in ministering to others. And so go with me, if you would, to the book of Philippians. Philippians, uh, let's go to chapter 4 of Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, go there with me, if you would. Philippians chapter 4, verse 14 to verse 17. Philippians chapter 4, verse 14 to verse number 17. And that speaks of fruit of generosity, ministering to others. This is what verse 14 of Philippians chapter 4 states. It says, Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now, ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. That's a compliment. Verse 16 says, For even in Thessalonica ye sent once, and again, unto my necessity. Verse 17. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that my, may abound to your account. Are you listening? Paul was not serving the Philippians because he wanted a gift from them. Paul wanted to be fruitful unto, to the Philippians. 
his motive for coming to them was not to receive from them, but to give unto them. Give them what? Sharing the fruit of the ministry that God had ordained him to carry out. The Philippians were great benevolent saints. They supported Paul in his need because remember now, when a person preaches or teaches the gospel and is doing it full time as Paul did, he is supposed to live by the gospel. And, and that's biblical, but the motive for doing it is not to receive, it's to give. And so when one gives of oneself and one gives of one gifting, God has a way of giving back to that individual whatever he or she needs as one exercise the fruit of generosity. We should never serve God with the motive of what I can get out of it. What's in it for me? The motive should be to please God, to bless his people, and allow his grace and his mercy to be multiplied in our lives so that we can become all that he has ordained for us to be. And this is how he wants us to live. A fruit bearer is one who gives his or her fruit, if you will, through the gift or fruit of generosity, ministering to others. God has designed it that way. God wants you to receive it that way. God wants you to be blessed that way because it is his way of causing and allowing every believer to be a fruit bearer. God does not want any of us to be fruitless. He wants us to be fruitful. And when we are fruitful, our life is full with a sense of value and worth in God. This is one of the reasons as Paul served and exercised the fruit of generosity, Paul came to the conclusion and he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. How, Paul? By doing what the Lord has assigned for me to do. If God gives the assignment then I can do it because he is the one that strengthens me. And when he strengthens me, I can do whatever it is because it's not my strength alone. God anoints me and God enables me and God energizes me to be what he has chosen me to be. And this is why Paul lived a victorious life after he was introduced to Jesus Christ. And guess what? You can do and I can do the same thing. How can we do it? We can do it because we are fruit bearers. 
We are called to bear fruit. We've been planted by rivers of waters by Jesus Christ. We didn't choose him. He chose us. He chose us and planted us. And wherever he planted us, we can be fruitful where he planted us because where he planted us, he already knows the possibilities that is in the place of our planting. That's why he likens the believer as a tree. Ye shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that would bring forth fruit in its season. Nothing about you will wither, not even your leaves. And so, what is so important, children of God, especially in these last days in which we live, we are to be fruit bearers. We are to bear fruit for the Lord. Look with me, if you would, in a, again. In verse number 17 of Philippians chapter 4, it states again, not because, this is Paul, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit. That's what should be our desire. I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Let me read verse 17 out of a new translation. It says, not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit that is increasing to your account. In other words, the fruit of generosity propels the believer who is a fruit bearer to desire others to profit as well. Profit how? Bearing the fruit that emanates from our lives. God want you to be a fruit bearer that others can be blessed through your life, by your life, and value can be added to that life that brings glory and honor to God. As we are fruit bearers, God works in us both the will and to do of his good pleasure so that sinners can be transformed in the saints. Whereas sinners live in darkness and in ignorance, now through the serving and the bearing of fruit in their presence, they are capable and able now to produce fruit themselves. So fruit bearers are in the position that God can use them to cause others to be fruit bearers as well. That's why Paul stated Verse 17, and as he did in Philippians 4, by saying, I am, what do you say? Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the profit. That is increasing to your account. In other words, I don't want you to remain the same. 
I want you to be a greater fruit bearer by me allowing to share with you what God has shared with me. This is why it is important, children of God, for us to always be mindful that we are workers together in Christ and that we are members of the same body. And every member have a different office or a different function or a different purpose. And when we carry out our uniqueness to the rest of the body, the body is blessed by our uniqueness or our service or our fruit bearing. And at the same time, we are blessed as well. It goes both direction. We serve, we are being served. God blesses. One plants, another waters. God gives the increase. The important thing is God being glorified and being magnified. I thank God this morning for another opportunity of sharing with you once again on another presentation of Rays of Hope. God is our hope. I will complete this series of messages the next time we are together in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Please remember to support, if you would, the Apostle Robert L. Sanders Christian Academy located in Liberia, West Africa by using the Cash app. I believe it is displayed there on the screen for you. It is Robert L. Sanders dollar sign cash app. Father, in the name of Jesus to Christ, we are so thankful this morning that you have allowed us to be together. Father God, I pray that you would bless your sons and daughters in a special way. Help us to be all that you have chosen us to be. Help us to be fruit bearers for the rest of our lives that we can bring praise and glory and honor to you. You are our God of hope. Bless us and cause us to be a blessing to one another. Cause us to be fruit bearers, O oh God, as long as we live in this dimension of life. Father, remember the school there in Liberia, West Africa. And Father God, remember region two of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless us and keep us in the sin of your divine will. We ask it in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and let the people of God say, amen and amen. Thank God for each and every one of you Enjoy the rest of your day and know that I love you in Jesus' blessed name. Have a blessed day the rest of today and remember to pray for rays of hope.